Hello and welcome to the Movie Bunker podcast. It's me, Matt. Hey, it's me, Chris. We're hey, back. Chris. We're back. We're <laughs> back. We had a bit of a holiday, didn't we? I mean, most people have like season breaks where they have a good six months in between, but we, we, we get twitchy after two weeks being away. Yeah, thinking all oh, the films are piling up outside the door. So we had to start watching them. <laughs> um, but yeah, this was a, a nice little two week break, I think. And uh, if not longer, was it? It feels like longer than two weeks. Maybe it was. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, okay, anyway. No, because no, we did Waterworld, didn't we? We did. Day? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that was a good one. Oh. And here's another good one. I mean, it, this is uh, all those lists of movies. And we think, what should we do? We need to pick a movie. And <laughs> It's like hundreds, Chris. What, 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 where should we go? I said, I feel like doing something a bit lighter, nothing too dark, you know. Yeah. We've done a few sort of sci fi kind of Action superhero. heavy, right? We've been really action heavy recently. Yeah. I thought, is there a rom com or something? And then we, we had this movie, A Million Die, A Million Dies to Way in the West. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a Million Ways to Die in the West. And, um, Oh, yeah, let's do that because I'm. Is it another film I've never seen? All right, play the trailer, Chris. Here's the trailer. Oh, hey, look, it's the ice. Why is it so big? So it doesn't melt. It's actually really interesting how they do it. It's this one company out in Boston that. <laughs> oh, oh, that went south so fast! Oh! The American West is a terrible place in time. Everything out here that's not you wants to kill you. Angry, drunk people. Hungry animals. Outlaws. Oh, the doctor. I couldn't save her. She had a splinter. Doc, what the hell were you supposed to do? I would like to welcome a new member to our community. Welcome to our awesome town. What's with this fair? Every year, people die. Really? Everybody hold still. People die at the fair. People die at the fair. Somebody in this town is going to die. Please don't shoot us on sex night. You beat this guy at a gunfight, you're going to be a real hero. He's the most vicious gunfighter in the territory. I'm going to teach you how to shoot. I got to get a running start. Dude, you really shouldn't drink in horse. Ah! Aim up. Get ready, I'm about to shoot a full load at your can. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Hey. Oh, no idea. You've never seen one? Yeah, I feel like I should have a piece of cake or something. All right, you ready? Yeah. I know you're here, Stark. Mila Kunis, Mila Kunis. Wow, you look amazing. I really love that the most alluring fashion today is to simulate a fat ass. If I was a black guy, this is the meanest trick you could play on me. <laughs> a million ways to die in the West. Maybe the frontier is not so bad after all. Hey! Hey, it's a sweet young couple. Can I interest you folks in a miracle cure? <laughs> Holy shit. So you've never seen this film? Because it's, it's been around for a, a while now, right? And it's got yeah. people in it. So most people, I think, have seen this in some fashion. Have you not yeah. even seen it in your usual way where it's on, but then you go and make a cup of tea and maybe change no. the light bulb and then come back and see some? No. Nope. It's it's been on my my watch list or my wish list or whatever on Netflix for uh, for a long time, and I thought, oh, I will watch that one. It looks funny because as with all films, the trailer does make it look slightly good, and I enjoyed yeah. Ted in a way, although <laughs> probably in in a sort of looking back at it now, probably not. It, it was it's still an inappropriate use of time. <laughs> so is this? But um, yeah, so what, why is it on the podcast though, Chris? What scores has it got? What, this one? Million yeah. dollars to weigh, in, to weigh in the die. <laughs> so, yes. This Can you one, say yes. it differently every time? <laughs> I'm going to try now. So, 33% in terms of tomato meter. So it's, it's a proper a well in, splat. It's a proper splat. And it's only got a 41% audience score as well, which is low. And even in IMDb, 
although it always fares better there as a 6.1 out of 10. But still, it, two, 2014, uh, a, a Seth MacFarlane vehicle of the yes. most Seth mcfarlane vehicle that there could be. <laughs> here, here, here is the plop synopsis. Uh, as a cowardly farmer begins to fail... Hang on. I put my teeth back in. As a, cow- <laughs> as a cowardly farmer begins to fall for the mysterious new woman in town, he must put his newly found courage to the test when her husband, a notorious gunslinger, announces his arrival. There you have it. There you have um, it, That's- it's got a cracking cast, though, isn't it? I think this is one of the things that you think, oh, I've got to sit down and watch this movie because everyone I like's in it, really. Yeah. It sort of reunites a lot of the cast from films that you've seen and especially his joints, if you like. Yeah, so we smash through them then the cast. Smash through the cast. Uh, <laughs> Seth MacFarlane, obviously, is in it. <laughs> he plays Albert. <laughs> he plays Albert, yes. Um, Seth Mac- so you referred to it as a joint earlier and in the richest and grandest way possible this is his joint right because he's writer producer well co-writer co-producer and director and main star yeah and i imagine he probably had a hand in the casting as well because obviously his love interest in the film is um charlie's the ron and yeah. made it amanda seyfried um, yeah liam neeson's in it uh, the fantastic giovanni ribisi is in it neil patrick harris yeah <laughs> With his wrapped candies, he's in it. <laughs> wrapped candies. Uh, Sarah Silverman, uh, Wes Studi. Wes Studi gets a really high billing in this film. but he's in Wes Studi. Like, yeah, he's in it for like two minutes. He's the um, chief of the, the tribe at, right towards the end of the film. And he goes yeah. on this kind of spirit quest. Um, and then a bunch of people you're going to recognise, but probably don't know the names of, to be fair. So... Yeah, and it's and Christopher it's Lloyd's in it as well. Yeah, Christ, yeah. What's well, his thing? It's incredibly uh, cameo heavy, and some of them just pop up for one sort of blink and you'll miss it uh, uh, thing. So Ewan McGregor and yeah, and, I don't think uh, he's even listed Ewan McGregor actually. He is. He's he right is. down the very end, and John ah. uh, John Michael Higgins is in it as well. Um, literally have one line, and so it's kind of like oh, ooh, you're yes. supposed to sort of go ha, ha. friends uh, of but, Seth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but it, okay my initial thoughts on this before we sort of uh, go go too deep on it because i'm sure you've written plenty of notes notes um, but um okay I, I really wanted to watch it based on the fact that yes it had a cast i'm quite a fan of the western and 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 what i think seth MacFarlane does with this movie is turn it in a way on its head and it's it's very meta isn't it essentially he's kind of sending up the whole genre and the time period yeah by looking at it with in a, through a modern man's eye so he's very he's incredibly knowing um all, all the things that, that happened or uh, that happened to, to people in that time period were pretty horrendous and the average <laughs> you know, the average kind of life expectancy of people was like 30 and they make a real good joke about it it's it sort of that sort of thing yeah but everything's is so incredibly meta and knowing and wink wink he could quite easily be mike myers doing this role and nodding and, and winking to the camera every, every other sort of line couldn't he yeah and it's a, it's a good um sort of simile and it could, i mean i think i've seen also references to sort of like an adam sandler film and i, I think it's valid because both of those um all three of these actors have been in that position of being writer producer heavily involved in you know films they kind of become bigger than the film itself so they it becomes a bit of a um i don't know what's the best way to put it they kind of they're unfettered right they can just do whatever they want and they you know they they do create these sort of like you say very meta there was a, a quite a funny scene where there's some kids playing with uh the hoops in the street and they're obviously talking in a way that we talk about kids playing too much video games these days. And oh, apparently it'll ruin their eyes. They'll, you know, they, they can't concentrate on anything else. Once you give them a hoop, that's it. That's them gone kind of thing. It's going to ruin yeah. the kids. Sort of thing. And there's, there are lots of jokes like that. But yeah, yeah, it kind of, I don't know if anyone listens to this podcast. I don't know if anyone listens to the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a fan of the horrible histories kind of thing but um, i would like to think and i haven't for one moment verified any of the ways of dying or the treatments the doctor treatments that were spelled through are actually valid but it wouldn't surprise me if some of them were so it kind of reminded me of a horrible histories and in a similar way it's very the jokes in this film are very like uh then they're not relevant at all to the plot right they're just something funny happens and it, it doesn't the plot isn't a part of it right yeah there's, there's just a joke and it, it, it 
in that way, it matches Family Guy. So if you're a Family Guy fan, I imagine you probably love this entirely because he'll turn up and they go, hey, I remember the time that I did this. <laughs> you know? And it's got nothing to do with the actual plot or story or character yeah. in any yeah. way. All the jokes, Matthew, just happen, as, as you just said, they happen around the central characters as the, as the story, uh, quote unquote, is developing or, or going on in the, in, in the forefront. Um, you've got to remember that it's, at this point, it's 2014, Seth MacFarlane is, is, was riding a, a massive wave of his own self-importance. He's quite a smug guy. I mean, he was you know, responsible for Family Guy, as we know, which is a very popular program and, and as a yeah, cartoon hugely. work works very well as a cartoon. I think if you try to transfer that humour onto screen, it does sort of separate the men from the boys quite quickly because Ted and Ted 2 and this movie in particular and his kind of Oscars um, uh, hosting as well, which was quite... Mm. Uh, had quite a, uh, was quite controversial at the time because he he brought the level right down to the bottom, um, and it hadn't you know it had it, it had enjoyed um, some great hosts in the past like you know Billy Crystal and and others that I can't quite remember right now, <laughs> but um, he, he he got some real flack for just bringing the tone right down and the humour right down to rock bottom. And it, 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 but like if you hire this guy, you gun that's what you're going to get, right? You know, he, yeah. he is a crude humour guy. You're not going to, you know, hire this man and you're not going to then get like cerebral kind of Steve no. Coogan, you know, style <laughs> highbrow humour. Um, in the no. same way, you're not going to hire Ricky Gervais and not expect to get insulted. There's just... You know what you're getting. If people hired this guy and go, why is he being so crude? Then they're fucking idiots. Yeah, no, you've got a good point. So it's really the Academy's fault, really. They, they, they yeah. knew that we're letting, getting themselves Fuck in. Fuck those or... guys. <laughs> and I didn't get yeah. an invite again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're not We're not a kind of Oscars kind of guys. We're the Razzies kind of guys. And even they don't want us uh, there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> How many times do you think you laughed throughout the movie? Uh, loads. Did that you? Oh, good. Yeah, this is um, this is like a, when I put this on, um, and my wife saw me get my notepad out. She's like, "Oh, for fuck's sake, what are we watching now?" Because I'm like, "What? What is? What does it have to be a bad film?" She's like, "Normal people don't take a notepad <laughs> to watching a film." And I'm like, "Fine, okay." Uh, I'm like, "It's a million ways to die." The West. She says, "Oh, this is a film we've seen before." I like this film. There's no way that's a bad film, and and um, you know, it's not. It I there is so many jokes in this that, and I do like a crude joke. I'm not. Yeah. I, I can't help <laughs> it. And that and the whole Edward Giovanni Ribisi's character and Sarah Silverman's sort of relationship, I thought was brilliant. I think it was the best thing in the film. Really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it's so it was so wrong and it was so weird that I just thought it was really good. <laughs> So is he, he's a, a good, honest Christian guy, and he's dating a hooker, uh, a sex worker. Sorry, um, and... <laughs> I don't think, in, in, yeah, in reference to this time, I mean, she's um, she's fully on the on the. On the I mean, to be fair, it looks like it's entirely her choice. Which she's yeah, doing. exactly. It is. Yeah, she seems to enjoy the work that she's doing, and um, <laughs> they make a very sweet couple, and obviously they have a, a very strong feelings for each other. He he. He, he's not fussed about making the next move. He wants to wait for marriage, but well, and she doesn't. She doesn't want to ruin no. their relationship by having sex out of wedlock. And uh, yeah, despite and... the you know the five times a day or if not more that, that she he keeps being reminded. Yeah, uh, they they do it, and it's quite funny. And he, it's Seth MacFarlane. Uh, character comes and just just basically ruins everything for them basically by planting <laughs> that seed of doubt that actually come on man you want to be boffing uh just just to see what it's like uh wedlock and um my um my favorite bit with them is characters they're sort of sat having a sweet conversation about waiting and <laughs> just this round massive massive cowboy just shouts roof let's fuck <laughs> She's like, oh yeah, I'll be right there. And, so she, and it was just, because it was such a sweet little moment. They were like, oh, okay, so she should be, you know, maybe tonight we could think about it. And like, and just, Roof, let's fuck. It's like, okay. Yeah. And they well, appointed, I, I, the appointment for anal as well. It's like, uh, and they're like, they're about to go off for their date. And it's like, well, you know, what time do we be back? Do you know? It's, it's, just, it's not like a dentist. You know, the guy will just pop around when he fancies sticking a dick into an asshole at some point. Oh yeah, but did that? Yeah, I know. I know. It was. It was funny. It, it is funny, and I, 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 I'm glad I did laugh because I think a lot of I'm it, glad uh, I laughed because <laughs> I think it could have been quite a tedious uh, watch otherwise. But it, a, a lot of it lands 
okay on the wrong side of your mentality and some of it a yeah. lot of it was just you can't help but chuckle at some of just the blatancy of it all i mean some of it's very not um self-indulgent i find i think that's why it, it loses a lot of um pacing because he's, he likes to spend a lot of time with um Charlie's as uh, his character. And on why stage. wouldn't you? I mean, if you're writing a film and Charlie Theron is in it, <laughs> you're going to make as many scenes as possible where you are just looking across at her. I believe. Yeah, he's yeah. I can see where, where he's come, where he's coming <laughs> from in this, but he's definitely it's a lot of navel gazing. There's a lot of sort of a pot smoking and they're just shooting the breeze. And I, those scenes just really slow the film down. There's, and and I guess without them, there wouldn't be a lot else going on because. Yeah, there's only certain side quests, side quests, it's like Red Dead Redemption, side characters that um, can really... Bolt. But it is, it's a good analogy, because like, yeah. you know, all the jokes are basically side quests, because <laughs> if you look at the sort of main thrust of the film, um, if you took out all of the sort of asides and the, the random cameos and the, the filth, then it's just a pure Western, right? You just got the typical, you know, bad guy coming into town, threatening people, and then, you know, a hero comes forth, training himself up to defeat the nasty guy. Yes, yeah, it's, it's really standard Western fare. they got a training montage as well, which is kind of Christ. Yeah, and I put down on the training montage, how cheap are bullets? Because these people have got no money, but the amount of bullets they're firing, I can only imagine in the Wild West, bullets were super cheap. Yeah, definitely. Well, either that or they just steal them off dead people. All the rest. That's <laughs> kind of the theme, isn't it? The whole thing that anything could kill you. So that you know, there's probably lots of guns and ammunition, and people just being looted left, right, and centre. Yeah. I just wanted to quickly mention um, Neil Patrick Harris. Who, oh, you can't who, just quickly mention him. No, he plays Foy, who's the gentleman uh, who runs the moustache uh, store or shop, um, and. He's he's so good. He's um. This is the sort of thing that he really excels at doing. He's just so tongue in cheek and yeah. camp, but it's so brilliant the way he carries that character. Um, superb. Uh, I thought he, he's worth uh, the ticket stub alone, really. Yeah. And how long was the uh, moustache song stuck in your head? Oh yeah, very good. <laughs> yeah. But I like the fact that he he kind of wants to grow a moustache, but he can't afford to grow one because of the upkeep. It's just <laughs> yeah. of all the lotions and the the balms and whatever, which is kind of true, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> and he just the, the way that um, Albert Seth MacFarlane's character just describes what kind of moustache he wants to grow to 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 for his character as uh, to Neil Patrick Harris's character when he when he's sort of browsing the shop. Yeah. Um, well, I kind of want it to go, you know across my lip and then down down the sides of my my face and then uh join my jaw and then go up my kind of uh, jawline up to my sort of sideburns up my sideburns and then join sort of my my head of hair and this become is my hair <laughs> it's just the level of detail that he goes into just this one sort of piece of dialogue it was it was good the other good thing was i thought was uh neil patrick harris plays somebody with uh, incredible diarrhea extremely well because yeah. I mean, we talk about um, sort of the, the level of well, where the humour's at in this movie. Yeah, there I mean, is it, a... it, it cannot be understated <laughs> how low the bar is for the humour in this film. I mean, we've mentioned like uh, the, the, the prostitute kind of uh, you know having jizz on her face and all of that. Yeah. The ear nail. The uh, I love his dad, and the, uh, I say we've seen this film before, and the phrase. Uh, I've got the fart needles <laughs> is <laughs> is a weekly utterance in this house. Basically, <laughs> if you do one of those particularly violently pushed farts, uh, someone in this house will shout out, I've got the fart needles. <laughs> but this time, and I, I never re I hadn't caught this previous on previous watch, is that afterwards says, that came out of my penis. <laughs> oh God, we're laughing too much. <laughs> Uh, I, this is what I don't understand. I don't understand how this film got as lower rating because, like, I watched it because I kind of enjoy his, his humor, and mm. I, you know, and I, I, I sought it out for that. Now, if I was, you know, didn't like this kind of thing, and I was forced to watch it, then maybe I could understand why you'd get it. But like, you know, like you say, the audience rating score is like, who is it that's going to see this film? Mm. I mean, I can only assume it's like Liam Neeson fans, Charlie Theron's fans are going, oh, look, that's one of her films. She's brilliant in it, and so is Liam Neeson. In fact, everyone is, is pretty pretty good in this. 
no yeah, one kind of lets the lets the side down at all. Yeah, that is a good point. No one really puts in a bad turn. I think it's because everybody's clearly getting on so well on and off the screen, uh, and and probably just making the movie was an absolute hoot by the looks of things. And that always doesn't always uh, transfer on like to the finished product. All the yeah, time. you could be having the best time in the world. There's a couple of times it, when uh, Charlie Theron sort of bursts into laughter, and it seems actually genuine. Yeah, like like when they're having a when it, like you say they they had they do have many many kind of sort of scenes when they're just together and talking and stuff in various different situations. So, but yeah, there's a couple of times. But anyway, we digressed horribly. You were talking about Neil Patrick Harris with his diarrhea. We shouldn't gloss over this. <laughs> no, well, one of the best scenes in the whole movie is uh, <laughs> when he's. Um... Yeah, he's he's got a quirky tummy, hasn't he? Did, did what did Albert's character do to him? Cause no, he, Charlie Theron. She she, she challenged him it. to a drinking thing, and she slipped That's in right. uh, some obviously some poo powder <laughs> into yeah. his uh, into his drink. So he has Seth, Seth Seth MacFarlane's going to do a duel with him, or what's it? A face off? What do they call him? <laughs> I think it's a duel, right? It's it like is a duel. Yeah. And uh, yeah, showdown. Showdown. Know. That's it. A showdown. So come, it's come fight. It, <laughs> before he, if before he can even sort of uh, do any of the shooting malarkey, he's um, defecating in, in strangers' hats. And there's one <laughs> bit where he, he completely fills one hat and then goes to get another one. <laughs> the way that it just bats his hand away and just keeps batting his hand away. And it's such a prolonged scene again, where they kind of, it stops being funny, but then starts being funny again. Because so, that kind of, I don't know, awkward laughter where it just becomes funny. It's just the way... But even I mean, that, old, like, that old guy was amazing. Like just to be stood there and just deadpan yourself, like to Neil Patrick Harris, absolutely sort of you know aping it up, and there you are, just stood there with no, no expression on your face at all, slowly yeah, yeah. swatting his hand away, and eventually he shits in your hat. That that would have been in the script. You'd have read that beforehand. Like right, so what 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 am I doing today? Oh yeah, you're stood here. Neil Patrick Harris is going to be <laughs> squatting there, pretending to shit into a hat. Then he's going to reach for your hat. Initially, you're not going to let him have that, but eventually, we'll have your hat and shit in it. And you're like, oh, okay, and I'm laughing cool. during this. I'm like, no, 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 no. You're like a statue. Okay, <laughs> nailed it. But, um, it's it's pretty good fun to watch, and it reminds me of uh, the the Jimmy Changa bombs again. <laughs> <laughs> Always the Jimmy Changa bombs of you. <laughs> Because the bloody sound effects are, uh, are like something out of a bad nightmare I've had, a bad dream, <laughs> or a, a, a very sort of recent incident <laughs> <laughs> could potentially be. Um, yes, no, yeah, no. Neil Patrick Harris wins an Oscar for this movie uh, for his portrayal as Foy, and yeah, Liam Neeson, Liam Neeson, <laughs> straight faced. You can imagine just the, the whole thing with him and Charlie Theron, o- uh, Oscar winner <laughs> Charlie <laughs> Theron doing this movie. And yeah, Amanda Seyfried, just, you know, these are A list Hollywood actors. Okay, so this film isn't perfect. No. And we're all about balance. Um, you'll notice that all the things we've talked about and all of the niceties of this film is within the first hour and a half. <laughs> After yeah. that, there is another half an hour of film that does not need to exist at all. Basically, that scene with Neil Patrick Harris shitting in a hat, at the end of that duel scene, there should have been a brief five-minute, max ten-minute sort of scene with Liam Neeson was telling it shot somehow, and that should have been the end of the film. Yeah. No one told Seth MacFarlane that he should just stop. Um, yeah. And the problem is, is when you're the producer, and I imagine he was probably sat in the editing suite with a guy. He's like, "Oh no, no, don't cut that bit. I said something funny in that bit." Or I mean, there's there's an awkward joke bit, and the, the spirit quest, and then a whole thing at the end. It's just it, it doesn't need to happen. It is. I mean, as soon as I started this film, and it come up one hour fifty five, I knew what the problem was with this film, and the film is half an hour too long, easily half an hour too long. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, I kind of, I was invested at the first hour and a half, and then yeah, you know what's going to happen as well. It's quite obvious what's how it's going to play out. Uh, so it's not like you, there's a plot twist. That there, there, there's no there's no plot twist or anything. It's just literally they're just filling. He's, he's he, all his ideas have been flung at the wall, and and he's he's made them stick with sellotape and blue tack. He's kind of just thinking we're we're, we're going to shoehorn all of this in, all of my ideas. 
uh, whether they go anywhere or not. There's a couple of scenes where they go to the fairground as well. It's like, really? Do we need to have all that in there? It's just him proving himself or her proof, you know, just it's, it's, they kind of rehash the same sort of joke and then rehash the same sort of um I did like the, with- uh, the, the no one smiles in pictures. That was a nice little thread through the, the film. You'd have to be, they mentioned it like uh, him and Edward's character talk about hearing about it. Then him and Anna talk about it. And then eventually he finds a picture of someone smiling in a, in a photo and, it's nice. It's a good little thread. A, but... Nice little run. Yeah, nice little uh, follow through. That follow through <laughs> fun, but um, other than that, you know, there isn't there isn't a great deal of. Um... Yeah, and to the to the point, like I, I can't remember anything funny in the last half an hour. Like in what would be the normal action culmination of a film, they suddenly realise, oh shit, we haven't done a, a, a joke in a while. So he gets like a, a sheep, which seems to have a human penis pisses on him oh god yeah it's like why would it why would it i mean i don't i mean i I don't want to google this i really don't want to google this but if anyone could tell me if a sheep's dick does actually look like a human dick because otherwise that's a weird mistake to make right or did they think that people would go not recognize a sheep dick and go oh what is that? It's not the first thing you think about, is it? When you think, <laughs> when you look at a sheep, but I think either way, it's hard to tell which which are men and which one are, are lady ones. I mean, sheep are the, one of the weirdest animals because they're they, they're one of the few animals like us that come clothed, right? <laughs> they got, <Yeah. laughs> they got their own they got their own clothing going on. So yeah, I I, I don't know what a sheep's penis is. So I really doubt it looks like a human dick, which this thing did that was but which emerged and then pissed on him well the thing is you know we've got quite a loyal following and and i think at least one of them will be deprived enough to be able to google that image and, and then instagram it to you uh, to the page uh, and see who i don't want to see the image again i just <laughs> i just want to know if that was an anatomically correct ship's dick no i mean we, we <laughs> might, might be able to google the if that's a fact or well, there might be a farmer out there that have, has come face to face with a with a an actual sheep's penis and will be able to tell us whether well, if, it was a, if not if you live if you live near a field with sheep in it just go out yeah. there and try and have a little look <laughs> just get a picture of a dick <laughs> <laughs> It's actually quite gory as well, isn't it? Because um, I wasn't mm. expecting to see the gore, but there's there is lots of uh, pretty decent splats and things. <laughs> yeah, the the, the bar brawl is absolutely brutal. People have their legs slapped, snapped into things, yeah. jugglers cut and stuff, and the the ice cube scene. Oh is god, also, yeah. So very Google. Google, <laughs> very gory. I don't. I say Google because I was literally <laughs> looking at my computer, which had Google on it at the time. Yes, it's very Google. <laughs> it's very Google that scene. <laughs> yeah, incredibly gory. But that whole massive ice crushes that guy's head, and then there's a bit later on where they basically uh, talk. The, the vicar basically uh, says that, that how sad it was, and that we all. Um, they'll all think about him when they're enjoying their nice refreshingly cold drinks and then he looks to the, the person and says oh my god they're actually going to still use the ice <laughs> you just shave off the corner right you wouldn't you just the shave off ice. the corner with all the skull and blood on it yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah what are we going to do with this movie because it's uh, I guess it's not in the it's not in the bunker is it just because we laughed at it surely yeah a comedy that makes you laugh has to go out and if you like, and, if you don't like crude humour, don't see this film. It's as simple as that. It's, I don't see any reason why you'd watch this film if you didn't know what you was getting into. We could cut out... There would be a decent version of this movie if you cut out all the waffle and just kept all the, all the, really, all the, all the crude humour that, that makes it quite... Yeah, you know, if this movie was one hour 30, fun. one hour 20, then it would, have, it would have worked entirely well. If they'd have just introduced, basically, just didn't need to bring back Liam Neeson as much as he's brilliant. They they already had their bad guy, right? They had Foy, and he was a perfect comedy bad guy. They didn't need a real bad guy. Is the issue? I think they had double bad guy. They they had the Spider Man Three syndrome, <laughs> where they've, yeah. they've they've given him too many too many enemies. The other thing as well, the, the, the dad is quite bad as well, because I think maybe <laughs> the next time one of my children loses a tooth, 
I'm going to trick them and, and just put some <laughs> horse shit under their pillow and say, do very stuff real. Now clean that shit up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that poor kid. But uh, he, he had it coming, I suppose. It's, it's an <laughs> awful dad. Uh, have you got anything else? Um, I had nothing because like, normally I have notes about things I didn't like. And I say, apart from the whole entire last half an hour, it was fine. It was a comedy. It was, I mean, maybe I'll, I'll, maybe we've finally been got to. Maybe our, our sight's been lowered so sufficiently that we, we don't even see the, the awfulness in this. But I just can't see I just can't see why you'd watch a Seth MacFarlane film and not anticipate lowbrow humour, which is delivered really well. That's the, yeah. that's the difference. Like, you know, when we watched um, Jack and Jill, yeah, again, it's an Adam Sander joint. You're going to expect low humour, but it was done really badly and, and it wasn't funny. Whereas this is, you know, you expect lowbrow humour, you get lowbrow humour and it's done quite well. And there's enough jokes that, you know, even if 80% of them, I'm going to go lower than that, even if 60% of them land, you're still laughing for a majority of the film. Apart yeah, from the last half an hour. <laughs> Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. It was ambitious, meta, and and most of it, yeah, sixty percent of it, seventy percent of it, about push work. So, out it goes. In yeah. it goes into the little canister. Is that the, the first time we've agreed on a non-bunker film? I think so. Well, the first time we've wholeheartedly agreed with that guest, I reckon. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that's yeah. good. Because all those pesky guests always get their own way. Cause yeah, and they're, they're good at picking films, those pesky guests. <laughs> yeah, we can't pay them, that's why. So it's, you know, it's courtesy, isn't it, to sort of send their films off the town. <laughs> they, they get the last call. We always say that. They always say that. We always say that. <laughs> we say that. Right, so it's, it's out of the bunker. It's out of the bunker. And I, I, I would say go watch it if you like Seth MacFarlane stuff. If you're a Family Guy fan, you've probably already seen it, to be fair. Yeah, and currently on um, Amazon Prime, isn't it? So you can, you can watch it. Thank you, Seth MacFarlane, for you know, bringing a little bit of uh, toilet humour to my life this week. It's been, it's, it's been, it was required based on the fact that it's been such a hot, sticky one. Uh, seeing other people hot and sweaty shitting themselves <laughs> in, in, in the wild west actually made me feel a bit better about myself yep yep i liked it i'd um, watch quick, it again if it came on just a quick one matt the plot keywords are arizona territory snake poison marijuana cookie low self-esteem and shooting range wow really yeah i yeah, mean yeah. they are like very specific. I mean, there are <laughs> definitely things that happen in the film, but they're really specific. That's uh, that's another. That's a good good game to play. Is IMDb plot keywords. Well, I guess until the next time you hear us in your uh, ear holes, we'll be. It's farewell, the, I guess. Do the plugs, Chris. <laughs> the plugs. Yes. Yeah, so I know this is this is where it gets really interesting because <laughs> um, <laughs> this is the bit everyone's been waiting for. How do we yeah. find out? more about this podcast that i'm already listening to chris how well i think more importantly if you're already listening to the podcast many thanks uh thank you to you and i don't know why and how you're still doing it but <laughs> um if you haven't written a review and give us a rating on whatever platform you're listening to please do so because it definitely helps us uh, climb the ladder and i say that every time but yeah get involved on twitter facebook and instagram because we're on there we've got a website matthew what's that called uh, www.moviebunkerpodcast.com which is a fantastic website Matt made it all by himself uh, not using um, Squarespace uh, <laughs> uh, and um, yes come along and look at that and enjoy everything and we're going to try and get back to sort of sending some merch and things out we've got a heap load of merch that we well a load of merch we've got some badges and postcards and things yeah. hanging around since pre-lockdown that we had all these lofty ambitions of going about town and <laughs> giving out to people and we haven't we've still got it all here so we'll find a way of getting it out to you uh, maybe via sort of twitter or something like that so um get involved uh, i'd love to hear from you and uh, and maybe if you've got an idea for a film you'd like us to do please tell us um so a couple of you have already done that and um hopefully we'll get around to seeing much like seth mcfarland's films this ending is 30 minutes too long. <laughs> <laughs> so that's all i've got to say thank you so much for sticking around for the uh, the, the edit uh, right at the end there <laughs> <laughs> well thanks matt it's been a lovely good fun catching up with you again lovely yeah. good fun <laughs> lovely good fun and what was the film called again, Chris? A Million Dies to Weigh in a Vest. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one.
<laughs> okay, cheerio, everyone. Bye. Bye. <laughs>